What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. We're here at the EVA Media Summit and we're here with KP from Nissan and we're gonna go through this Nissan Leaf. Well, hi, welcome to beautiful Pasadena. We're here on a charging rooftop and my name's KP, I'm a Nissan product specialist. We are glad to have the Leaf part of this system. We've been on Leaf sales for almost 12 years now over 500,000 sales globally. The beauty of this car is that it is the most attainable and affordable of the EVs, because EVs are blowing up. We just released three new concepts online this morning, but we have the most tried and true and reliable one right here. Starting at still under 28,000, Nissan still has a bundle of the 7,500 tax credits available. You can have this as a nice basic commuter, 149 miles on a charge, also, Leaf Plus makes a great primary car. Plenty of room for five and up to 226 on range. And that still lists out under 40 as the Leaf Plus model. Things like Pro Pilot, single lane, hands-on, autonomous, semi-autonomous driving, stopping, restarting, and the e-pedal, which was introduced a few years ago, which is an absolute blast. Puts more miles back in the battery, but the fun factor is Single pedal driving, accelerating, medium, and even moderate stopping all happens with a single pedal. So it's fun to get used to, it's fun to get the miles back, and if you don't think driving with two pedals was hard to do, way do you do it with just one? It's really fun. So Leaf's been around for a while, we keep making it newer, putting more technology in, and it's just the little baby brother of our upcoming Aria, which is a pure entry luxury crossover, all-wheel drive, taking reservations right now, Bram. Thank you. Let's hop inside yeah, and just check out some of the features there. And now we've moved inside the Nissan Leaf and we're just going to check out some of the basic features. Not a full walkthrough, but kind of the highlights of sorts. So one of the things that's kind of unique now, because as all the new releases, the brand new EVs have come out and we've redesigned, this Leaf, this first EV, really had a lot of traditional placement and some analog stuff to go with the modern technique. Because you can't change everything for everybody all at once. So they're still used to some controls and buttons, but your shifter was the first big major step because without gears, you don't need a gear stem. So it's just push and play for your directions. But some of the cool highlights here, again, this is one of the first cars where everything, not uh, HVAC, was touchscreen. So you're gonna control everything through here. You're gonna see your range. You can even see where your charging stations are on a trip. It'll give you your mileage up top here. Um, but a call down here to some cool buttons. You've got regular and eco. So eco literally forces you to squeeze and drive more carefully. It takes a little bit of power away from that plunger under the pedal. But this e-pedal button is what's really cool. Um, maximizes your battery range, but it adds a huge fun factor. You're literally driving with a single pedal. Acceleration, medium, and moderate braking all happens with one pedal. And if you don't think it's a pain to use two pedals, way do you drive with one for even a few minutes? It's just fun. And it's even sportier because for me, I notice immediately if I'm accelerating quickly, if I drop off the pedal quickly, it's just like downshifting in something that's sportier. You get a lot of that resistance and that torque, and it's really not using the brakes. It'll come to a full stop. I can take my foot off both pedals car will not move until I accelerate. So e-pedals are great every day around town feature. It's on every single leaf. It's not an upgrade. Does that hold between key cycles? It does not. So okay. if you're off, you have to return on e-pedal. Like I each just time. turned it okay. on. So there's off each time it's going to be a normal two pedal car. Okay. Probably good for the approach here. So that way normal person that's never driven an EV can hop in and it's not abnormal. It, it is. And there's no downsides to it, but the, you know, everything's unusual so uh, the first time I was doing a high-speed drive I was on the highway and I'd left the e-pedal on you're used to coming up behind traffic and just dropping off the accelerator pedal to coast you don't coast when e-pedals on you drop off the accelerator and you have downshifted you have come to a very moderate braking and it's a little bit of a surprise yeah but it's there and again emergencies heavier braking your brake is always your brake it never stops working you don't turn off the brake you just turn on the ability for the motor to toggle both directions <laughs> on the e-pedal. We've had that question like, no, no, the emergency, the mind is always about to go here and that's always gonna work for you. So things like that, the Pro Pilot we introduced, 
very early on in the Leaf. So when you turn that on, it's a combination of your intelligent cruise, where you've got the automatic spacing, and you can pick three different depths between the car in front of you. It will bring you to a complete stop, even without you hitting the brake. But the big number, the big deal with ProPilot, it is a single lane semi-autonomous driving aid. So when you turn it on, if the lanes are marked, all you have to do is have a little bit of torque on the wheel with your hands. The car makes all the highway turns for you, slows down in traffic, comes to a full stop, warns you if there's a curve coming too steep. So it's really doing driving, but you just have to be touching. So does it have a capacitive steering wheel or is it using torque sensing? It is using torque sensing. So okay. it, it, it needs some motion occasionally. Now the big step here is coming up and it's not here, it's at the other event today, our upcoming Aria, our bigger, beautifully equipped entry luxury crossover with all wheel drive available, ProPilot 2.0. Now we're talking about programming your trip, multiple highway lane control, all the turns, even the more aggressive turns, speed management, full stoppage, getting you over to the exit lane beforehand. My hands are now in my lap. I am hands off on ProPilot 2.0. I'm still in charge. I'm still watching the drive. I could be on the wheel. I could be me in here. I'm ready to grab or hit the brake, but it's going to do multiple lane for me and I don't have to be torquing. Is that only on pre-mapped routes? It's on pre-mapped routes and I haven't read all the fine details because Aria won't even be on the road until early fall, but that's the big deal. It's going to have 2.0. Perfect. Thank you very great. much. Great. Thank you time. guys very much. We had a great, great time here. Some beautiful, beautiful cars here. And, and we're proud to be here as the top selling single name plate. So it is the easy, easy choice as a second car, as a high mileage commuter, because Leaf is known and it's, and it's helping us with our reliability as we all go forward in the new models. All right, thank you for the tour of the Nissan Leaf. While it not, might not be the most exciting, the most feature packed, I think it's a really good value. And if you need a commuter car or if you're considering a second car or even just like a cheap car for your kid or something, I think it's a great option. And having more options is always a good thing in any segment of the vehicle world. So especially in the EV world to have something that you can get around 20K after incentives, great deal. Thank you. Thank you.